Uh, good afternoon, Long Beach. Uh, today is our briefing for June the 12th, 2020. Uh, as always, we will do our Spanish translation in Espanol después de, um, de las preguntas. And, and um, also just to announce for today, I know there's obviously been a lot going on, um, but we're also going to be adjusting our briefing schedules. So uh, starting uh, next week, we'll be doing briefings on Mondays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. So they'll be they'll go down to Mondays and Thursdays twice a week um, at 3 p.m. So we'll start with our, our COVID numbers. And uh, as of today, we've got 2,565 residents who've tested positive uh, for, for COVID. About 1,923 have recovered. And uh, we're up to 110 Long Beach residents who have passed. We had an additional two residents today um, that have passed. Uh, the two that passed today were both uh, in their 80s. Um, and they, of course, most of our, um, our deaths continue to be associated with long-term care facilities. Uh, and our, our love goes out to, uh, to those families. Um, also want to talk about our health order uh, that got released uh, late last night. Um, first, I just want to uh, note one uh, kind of change in the health order that uh, the LA County also changed. So I just want to make, make note of that, and then I want to get into the, the broader health order. Um, so the, the one alignment that's, that's been different is uh, there, ha there, are, there are some changes for families. Now, this is not for general public, but for if you are your own immediate family unit and you live together uh, within the same home, um, families now can uh, use beaches for more stationary activities like picnicking um, and enjoying the sun. So that is that's something that families are allowed to do. Uh, and beaches and parks are also open now for more outdoor recreation and physical activities. Uh, and that could include um, uh, families enjoying uh, as a unit of you know volleyball or pickleball uh, and, and able to gather together as a family unit. Now, we still have to, of course, for everyone else, uh, practice physical distancing, and the health orders do not recommend that non-family unit folks gather, whether it's on the beach or in parks. But uh, for families that are together, that is something that was adjusted in, in the health order, and that's also a uh, adjustment in the county order as well. So beginning today, as we discussed on Wednesday, a variety of businesses can begin to reopen. Uh, that includes our gyms and fitness facilities, uh, our day camps for young people, uh, museums and galleries, and the Aquarium of the Pacific, uh, some of the campgrounds and RVs that we have, uh, RV parks, um, production for uh, film and television, which we do a lot of in Long Beach. Uh, and finally, and it's probably um, the biggest one from an economic perspective, is our tourism is such a big part of the Long Beach economy, uh, hotels and uh, short-term rentals also can begin uh, today. Um, uh, all of those are in alignment with uh, our 88 partner cities, 88, 87 partner cities in LA County. Uh, and as a reminder, um, what's not allowed to open that is opened in some other parts of the state because their numbers are better than ours are, are bars and other family entertainment centers. And so um, those are still not allowed to open. I also want to note that um, the state is expected, they either just did or, or they will soon, uh, to release new guidance for a variety of different uh, types of industries, but they're not permitted in Long Beach at this time. So you're going to hear pretty soon um, the governor or the state put out guidance, for example, for nail salons, tattoo shops, spas and massage businesses. Uh, you're going to hear about movie theaters, live performance theaters, uh, gaming facilities and certain and certain entertainment and concert halls. Uh, while that's going to be put out by the state, the earliest day that those can get adopted will be the following Friday. So next Friday, there will be some parts of the state that will likely be allowed to start beginning some of those activities and industries. But I just want to make sure that we're clear that just because the state announces that those will begin to start, some of them maybe as, as soon as next weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, that doesn't mean that Long Beach or, um, or LA County will move in that direction because our, uh, our numbers are not as good as other parts of the counties as it relates to infection. Uh, and so this happened this week. So we had, as you probably know, uh, the governor over the weekend announced that um, gyms and fitness facilities and museums and hotels and bars 
could reopen statewide. And we all heard that, I think, on Monday of this week. Um, a lot of folks assumed that just because the governor allowed those, that they would be allowed here in Long Beach or in LA. And that's not the case because uh, we know bars are not allowed to reopen because they are a high risk, higher risk uh, interaction uh, because of the closeness. Um, and so uh, I just want to remind people that just because the state says you can reopen industries, you, folks need to wait to hear the guidance from the city and or the county. That is, that's because it's going to, you're going to start seeing different things open up at different paces in the state, especially because different parts of the state have, um, uh, are, are doing better than others. And so while a lot in Long Beach is doing better than the rest of the county, uh, we're still behind significantly the rest of the state. And so that's important for us uh, to note. Also want to announce that we've also launched our uh, Safe Biz program. Safe Biz is a web interface which guides business owners through a checklist of safety requirements to our city's health order. And the checklist includes measures to protect employees, uh, to keep crowds from gathering, keeps patrons at least six feet apart, uh, and, and, and uh, gives you uh, pointers on sanitation. You can visit the longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 website for information on what to do and how to download that. Uh, and then once, um, once, you, once you do so, there's kind of like a checklist and an opportunity to, to, for your business to get certified uh, as well. So please, if you're a business, uh, look into that. Uh, and um, also want to turn now to uh, homelessness. So we have, uh, we just put out information on our ho annual homelessness count. Every single year, the city of Long Beach puts out our homelessness count. Homelessness was a crisis in Long Beach uh, before COVID-19, and it continues to be a crisis and will get and could get exponentially worse because of now the unemployment rate and the economy that in many sectors has collapsed. Um, we want to make sure and have always, and we always want to make sure that people experiencing homelessness have access to resources and housing, and, and they they should, um, we should treat all individuals with the dignity that they respect, that, that they deserve, and the respect they deserve. Um, I also know that our um, our findings are out today, and so we know that in Long Beach, our point in time count, and this is basically a count that's done in partnership with uh, uh, the federal government and our regional partners. And we have hundreds of volunteers and staff that are out doing these counts, and they happen once a year. Uh, this year, we uh, our point in time count for essentially the 2019 year noted that we have a total of about 2,034 people experiencing homelessness. That's the count that was done when folks were out. Uh, that is a 7% increase from last year. So the year to year count is a 7% increase. Um, you may have read that um, LA City had about a 14% uh, percent increase, um, and LA County had about a 13% uh, increase countywide. Um, so we are, uh, while we are tracking um, uh, lower than the rest of the county in Los Angeles, uh, every person that is experiencing homelessness and any increase should be concerning to us uh, as, a, as a community. Uh, we know that we have to do more, and we are, of course, we're building our first year-round shelter in North Long Beach that will open this summer. We provided a lot of temporary shelters across the city. Uh, we have new food programs, new outreach workers and programs, uh, and we have quality of life units uh, with, uh, within our public safety units that are especially trying to assist people experiencing homelessness. Now, um, this is our 7% our, our count is still lower than our high. Of, in, in 2013 is when we had our highest count in Long Beach. It's still about a 29% decrease from the 2013 number, uh, but it's still um, concerning. I uh, also want to note, and this is a positive, that we had about a 42% reduction in veterans experiencing homelessness uh, in Long Beach. Uh, and this has been because of our strong partnerships uh, that we've had with US Vets, the Villages at Cabrillo, and, and so many other, other partners. Uh, I, wanna fo I want folks also to know that um, Long Beach continues to build additional housing opportunities. There is a lot of affordable housing and housing for people experiencing homelessness as a transition to housing that is being built right now, much of which on the Long Beach Boulevard corridor. Uh, and to also just share that right now, um, mayors across the state, myself included, and all the big city mayors 
are advocating for additional homelessness funding uh, within the state budget that is expected to get passed here in the next uh, week or so. And so we're all working very hard to get more funds for homelessness from the state. And, um, and we are, uh, as we deal with this challenge, we know that COVID is gonna make the situation worse for us. Uh, and so with that, I just want everyone to have a safe Friday. Continue to wear your face coverings and your masks. I'm gonna introduce our health director here in just a minute. And please, um, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that places like Orange County are choosing to uh, pass laws and, and adopt policies that don't require face coverings and masks. Um, that's irresponsible in our opinion and certainly in mine and in, in our cities. Uh, and we would hope that other jurisdictions don't follow that lead. They, I'm, it's concerning that they are our neighbor and they're choosing to go in that direction. So please, when you're out, wear a face covering, wear a mask when you go to any business, when you're out around people, you need to have one. Um, and please, it's, it's also part of the health order. Keep everyone safe and our most vulnerable people protected. Uh, so with that, let me turn this over to Kelly Colopy, who is our director of uh, the health department. Kelly. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to start today just speaking about the homeless count. Uh, the mayor shared a number, a, a lot of the numbers. Uh, the count was conducted on this past January 23rd. We had about 200 volunteers out all throughout the city. Um, we do a lot of work ahead of time of that count as well to really be able to understand where we have, um, where we, we consider sort of our hot spots for people um, who are homeless and where people are living and so that we can make sure that we have an opportunity to interview all of those folks to really be able to understand their story. Um, our increase this year um, remains lower than our surrounding jurisdictions and really does reflect the diligent work of our homeless services team, uh, our city partners, and our nonprofit partners as we work to tackle the issue around homelessness. This year, we did add a question to the homeless survey, um, and we asked them what was the key reason that led them to be homeless. And 35%, um, so over a third, cite income or the lack of income or loss of job. And 15% uh, say that they just they lost their housing. 19% say that it was due to mental health and substance use. And 18% attributed it with family problems, which could be divorce, it could be um, domestic violence or other things. I think a lot of people think that people become homeless because of substance use or mental health uh, systems. But what we find that when we were interviewing people, people become homeless often because of income or loss of housing, but really, um, the longer that people are on the streets, uh, the more likely that they are to start to develop a mental health condition from the trauma or substance use. Uh, um, so our goal is really to start to build, to co continue to build systems uh, that support people so they never end up in that space. As the health department, we do lead a multi-pronged approach um, across the city with the other departments. That includes our police and fire departments, our public works, our development services, the library and parks, recreation and marine, and the city attorney's office. We work to, together to expand capacity and to enhance service delivery to those most in need. Throughout this COVID-19 pandemic, we've operated four temporary shelters, including a variety of services and supports, which include medical and mental health assessments and resources. We transport people on essential errands if they need to get to a pharmacy, need to get their laundry done, whatever that is, we provide that transportation. Um, and we also provide some activities. It's, you know, there's a lot of times when people um, within the different shelters, uh, it's amazing what park staff can come up with uh, as terms of fun and activities for folks. There are nearly 250 guests currently residing in these shelters, which are providing a safe place for those most in need during this unprecedented public health crisis. The city has also instituted a number of new measures to protect persons experiencing homelessness from COVID-19. These include uh, installing soap dispensers and hand washing stations or hand sanitizing stations at strategic locations throughout the city. We're distributing uh, sanitization kits um, to people who are living in encampments and we're conducting outreach all throughout the community. Our work has not slowed down in the space of COVID. Our multi-service center continu continues to act as the central hub for those who are at risk of experiencing homelessness. We serve about 13,000 clients per year. In addition, this summer, our new year-round shelter will open, as the mayor um, discussed, and we'll have more supportive services uh, in North Long Beach. 
So homelessness continues to be a core focus for our city. We're committed to our vision that homelessness is rare and brief when it occurs. Our COVID pandemic only elevates the need to assist those who are most vulnerable with our city. So now I want to talk a little bit about COVID because, you know, what would COVID be without more reminders? Um, so we do want to make sure that um, that as we're moving, uh, sorry, moving further into the stages of reopening, that you understand that testing is so important. And so we want you to follow all the protocols, but also we want we want you to make sure that if you have symptoms or you believe you've been exposed, uh, that you go and get tested. And then, you know, once you are tested, that you if you test positive, um, that you do uh that you do isolate, that you help us notify people um, that they've been exposed so that they can also quarantine. If you need testing or you have, um, or you have any symptoms, uh, please go to one of our sites. There are six free testing sites around the city. Uh, if you go to the longbeach.gov forward slash COVID-19 page, you can sign up at any of those spaces. Um, in terms of the orders, the public health order, uh, the protocols and guidance do vary per sector. So while there's a lot of things that are common across all the sectors, there are very specific guidance for each, and each of them is a protocol with a checklist. So wherever you fall within that, please go to the order. Um, make sure that you pull the appropriate guidance, that you go through those protocols and post them um, on the front window uh, of your business so that people understand all that, you have to, all that you are doing. And once again, I ask that you really do be vigilant in your work um, to just be healthy and safe. It's the, the ability to continue to reopen our city relies completely on you. It relies on everyone who is out and about making sure that they are taking the proper distancing protocols, um, that they're wearing their face coverings when they're with others, that you're washing your hands. There's just so much that we need to be doing right now. So I ask that you really be paying attention to that. I also just want to talk a little bit about just the work that we're doing. You know, I've talked to, I've talked a little bit in the last couple of weeks um, about how you know the the issues around racism and injustice as public health crises and how they're intertwined within the COVID pandemic, um, which is leading to the representation, the overrepresentation of hospitalizations and deaths among our African American community. We have been engaging in a number of community forums to understand the impacts of COVID and race in the city. This week, the City Council adopted a framework for reconciliation, acknowledging the existence and longstanding impacts of systemic racism in our city and across the country. The city is building an opportunity to reflect community voice in planning policies and programs. It's reviewing internal policies, utilizing an equity lens and really paying attention uh, to the impacts that they are having across our city utilizing data to determine inequities and working to address these inequities so that everyone in our city can live their best lives, regardless of race and where they live. This must be a multi-system structural approach, which includes just everybody. It includes our businesses, it includes our schools, it includes our health systems, it includes our social service systems. It includes so many pieces and it really is, uh, it will be just a really broad spectrum of work and uh, the city is committed uh, to this work moving forward. Finally, I wanna congratulate all you grads. Um, I just, you know, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment. Uh, whether you're graduating from kindergarten, whether you're graduating from high school, whether you're graduating from, from college, all of those show real success. And uh, we want to give you a big shout out. We realize that you haven't had a chance to celebrate as you normally would, and that has been really hard for folks. Uh, we have seen a lot of graduation parades um, in cars, and we just want to give you a big shout out, and we thank you for staying safe uh, during this time. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to the mayor. Great. And then, um, are there any questions? Yeah, we have um, one question from the media, Mayor. Um, question comes from Haley at the Press Telegram. Go ahead, Haley. Hi, um, my question is for Kelly. Um, so, for the homeless count, obviously, it took place in January before COVID nineteen hit. So, I am just wondering if you have any sense of how much the pandemic might have impacted at the number of people who have fallen into homelessness since then, and, and what the numbers might look like now. Um, you know, we don't we don't have a sense. Certainly, when you you know when you understand that thirty percent of the folks who have become homeless do so because of loss of job or income, and then we think about the increase um, in, in the joblessness um, within the city due to COVID, um, we know that that we are going to see an increase 
Um, but we don't have we don't have a clear picture of that right now. But we'll certainly be looking at it in the future. We are committed to supporting people as much as we can, so that this is not uh, so that they do not end up homeless. All right, thank you, Kelly. Uh, we have one question from social media as well. Uh, the question is: I know Kelly talked about the shelter being in North Long Beach. Um, someone is asking where exactly is the permanent shelter going to be? Yeah, I mean the permanent shelter is going to be on Atlantic, uh, over at the old Atlantic Farm site. So that is about that's what Atlantic and it's it's certainly it's over by the by the 91. Actually, it's not not too far from the 91. I think so. Um, uh, uh, and so it, it's it's uh, it's a good site because of its size, and so it's an area that gives us enough room uh, to build uh, not just the shelter, but hopefully um, there's plans to move forward and do some uh, transitional housing and to do some workforce housing development there. And so we're trying to find some some great partners, and uh, the community there has really been supportive of creating a really great uh, vision and, uh, and project there. So we're, we're excited, but the first phase is just a sheltering. I think opens this summer, right? Like Jill, uh, July. next month. July. Yeah. July. We good. So we're going to, we're going to do our, our translation in Spanish and, uh, everyone have a good weekend and a safe weekend. And, uh, now we'll have our translation in Spanish. Thank you. Muchas gracias, alcalde. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por estar con nosotros este viernes. Uh, feliz viernes. Um, queremos um, nomás avisarles que empezando en la próxima semana, nuestras um, sesiones informativas van a ser no, nada más dos veces por semana, empezando el lunes y vamos a tenerlas el lunes y el jueves. Nuestros uh, números del coronavirus um, desde hoy tenemos que 2,565 residentes que han probado positivo con el coronavirus. Aproximadamente 1,923 personas se han recuperado. Nos interesa este informarles que hemos perdido a 110 personas de la ciudad de Long Beach del coronavirus y 84 de esas muertes han sido um, en los centros de enfermería de largo plazo. Nuestra orden de salud. Este salió a partir de hoy. Vamos a abrir nuestras playas y parques para más actividades. Tengan en cuenta que en estos so, uso solo para miembros de los mismos hogares. Eso significa que grupos de familia no significa que se congreguen con varias personas de diferentes hogares. O so esto incluye las personas que viven en el mismo hogar. Um, diciendo esto, queremos que uh, las actividades son actividades pasivas como um, tomando el sol en la playa y haciendo picnics y cosas así. La recreación reactiva es al aire libre, que incluye canchas de baloncesto y de voleibol también. Desde hoy, las empresas que pueden abrir son gimnasios, um, instalaciones de lugares para hacer ejercicio, los deportes profesionales, pero sin audiencia en vivo campamentos para los niños y jóvenes, museos, galerías y el acuario también, campamentos, parques de casa rodantes y recreación al aire libre, producción de música, cine y televisión, que es algo que um, se ve mucho en la ciudad de Long Beach, y finalmente los hoteles, alojamientos y ciertos alquileres de corto plazo. Sabemos que hemos oído el gobernador y que el estado de California ha anunciado adicionales con, res, con respecto a más aperturas hoy. Pero, sin embargo, queremos hacerles um, saber que en la ciudad de Long Beach todavía no vamos a reabrir los siguientes, um, las siguientes empresas, que son salones de uñas, salones de tatuajes, um, lugares para agarrar masaje, cervecerías y bodegas que no sirven comida salas de cine, centros de entretenimiento familiar como uh, boliche y cosas así, actu uh, actuaciones en vivo, festivales, uh, estadios y centros de entretenimiento como para los conciertos. Les recordamos que a uh, vez más de nues nuestros que por favor se recuerden lavarse las manos y todo eso todavía practicar la el distanciamiento físico y usar coberturas de tela en la cara, en su cara. Um, sabemos que es difícil porque se oyen las, um, las nuevas órdenes del estado y del condado, pero nuestros números todavía no están donde deben estar para poder reabrir todos los negocios. Este, 
además de todos nuestros esfuerzos con el, con el coronavirus, estamos trabajando vigilantemente para abordar el problema de falta de vivienda. Garantizamos viviendas seguras de calidad para todos los residentes. Uh, uh, es una prioridad en nuestra ciudad de Long Beach. Este problema de personas experimentando del desamparo se ha visto antes del coronavirus y definitivamente vamos a ver uh, más problemas con eso después de que uh, pasemos todo esto en los próximos meses. Desde hoy um, tenemos a 2,034 personas sin hogar. Este es un aumento de, de 7% desde el año pasado. Este número sigue siendo significativo signif significativamente más bajo que las ciudades cercanas, incluidas la, la ciudad de Los Ángeles. También hubo una reducción del 42% en los, de los veteranos um, que experimentan la falta de vivienda. Esto refleja el arduo del trabajo de la ciudad y las sólidas alianzas que han ayudado a encontrar viviendas permanentes a otros servicios para nuestros veteranos. Um, los alcaldes, igualmente como nosotros y los de Los Ángeles, um, alrededor del estado estamos solicitando más fondos adicional del estado para ayudar a los desemparados, especialmente después de todo lo que estamos viviendo con el coronavirus. Algún otro requisito que hay que está disponible para los negocios es SafeBiz. Una de las herramientas que nos complacen compartir para la comunidad um, es porque es una interfaz del, en, en, una, en sitio web que permite a las empresas ejecutar y completar una lista de verificación de las medidas descritas en protocolos de distancia física, la orden de salud más segura en el hogar. So, las em, empresas tienen oportunidad para autocertificarse, para cumplir con todos los requisitos antes de volver a abrir al público. So, ahí pueden um, tener más información y seguir um, dato a dato qué es lo que necesita para reabrir su negocio. La lista de verificación incluye todas las medidas para proteger a la salud de, sus, de ustedes, sus empleados y del público. Y para mantener a las personas al menos seis pies de distancia, evitar el contacto innecesario y aumentar las, las medidas de, um, sa de saneamiento para apoyar en entorno más seguro para los clientes. Uh, un poquito más de información que nos dio la directora Kelly hoy con lo, toda la información de los desemparados desamparados es eh, que realizamos nuestro recuento del pasado 23 de enero en este año. Um, y aunque hemos visto un pequeño aumento este año, es personas que sufren la falta de vivienda. La ciudad continúa trabajando di diligentemente para abordar el problema de falta de vivienda. Durante la pandemia del coronavirus, hemos visto uh, y operado más refugios temporales que ofrecen una variedad de necesidades y servicios, incluidas uh, evaluaciones de recursos médicos, la salud mental y el transporte para recados esenciales como citas médicas, farmacias y lavanderías. Actualmente hay cerca de de 250 que residen en estos refugios que brindan un lugar seguro para quienes lo más necesitan durante esta crisis de salud pública. Recuerden también que estos centros de desamparados, you know, no podemos forzar a nadie que llegue a estos lugares o que se queden, pero están abiertos al público. Um, so si conoce a alguien que puede aprovechar de esos servicios, por favor, déjele saber. Uh, siguiendo, claro, con los recordatorios del coronavirus, Queremos uh, decirles que entre más uh, días pasan y vamos reabriendo más negocios, es muy importante que sepan que las pruebas son, siguen siendo lo más importante y tenemos capacidad para hacer las pruebas um, you know, en varios sitios sobre la, en la ciudad de Long Beach. So, por favor, por lo tanto, si necesitan más información, llamen a la línea de ayuda o puedan visitar cualquiera de nuestros sitios de, de pruebas en la ciudad. Sigan practicando la, el distanciamiento físico, lávense las manos seguido, limpiar mucho y desinfectar um, las áreas donde pasamos normalmente muchos uh, gérmenes de persona a persona. También hemos estado hablando durante esta semana pasada sobre el racismo y la injusticia como siendo junta con, como una crisis de salud pública. Hemos estado participando en varios foros de la comunidad para comprender los impactos de los codiciosos y la raza en nuestra ciudad. 
Esta semana la alcaldía adoptó un marco para la reconciliación que reconoce la existencia y los impactos de largo dato del racismo sistémico en Long Beach y en todo el país. La ciudad está construyendo oportunidades para reflejar la voz de la comunidad en las políticas, proporcionando un marco para involucrar al público en un proceso de reconciliación, revisiones de internas, ampliando un enfoque en la equidad equidad en la planificación y los programas y el plan de acción local en nuestra ciudad. Um, también, por último, queremos uh, también felicitar a todos los que se están graduando, sea que sea de la primaria, de los grados de, de la preparatoria, las high schools o del colegio, las universidades. Estamos muy orgullosos de todos sus logros. Sabemos que no es fácil y que no han podido celebrar como se celebraría normalmente, pero eh, Queremos nomás acompañarnos en su, y felicitarlos por todos sus logros. Um, creo que eso es todo por hoy. Muchas gracias por estar con nosotros. Um, that is all for today's updates, and we'll see you guys next week. Happy Friday. Thank you.